we're looking to calculate the direct labor rate and efficiency variance. I want to remind you that the spending variance and the rate variance actually mean the exact same thing because what we spend on direct material is similar to what we spend on our direct labor. Using the word rate variance instead of spending variance is just something we do in managerial accounting. But I'm going to use these two terms interchangeably and I'm probably going to use spending variance far more frequently. Also, by the way, this is called the price variance because of the price we're paying for either the labor or the direct materials. Then the usage variance is actually identical to the efficiency variance. How much direct material do we use? How efficiently do we use our direct material? How much direct labor do we use? How efficiently do we use our direct labor? So these terms are interchangeable and I use them as such. Number two, calculate the direct labor's rate and efficiency variance. Now in your textbook, they're probably using the formula method or the column method, but I'm going to use the diamond method. And I'm going to calculate both of the direct labor variances. So I'm going to do the price variance over here. VAR variance short form, but this is the same as the rate or spending variance. And on the right hand side, I'm going to do the efficiency variance. Which can also be called the usage variance. I'm going to start by drawing my diamond. Leave two spaces, do the bottom part of my diamond, leave two spaces, do another half diamond, and then at the bottom leave two spaces. and draw my little square U and then at the very bottom a large U. I'm going to move my page up a little bit. Now we know that the alphabet moves from A on the left hand side to Z on the right hand side and we're going to use that knowledge to know which price should we put first. So A comes before S so we're going to do the actual price. And in this case, price, of course, means the rate at which you pay your employees. Then, and so I'm putting that on the left-hand side of the diamond. On the right-hand side of that first price variance diamond, I'm going to put standard price. Again, the price or rate that I pay my employees per hour. It's always per hour. So that's my actual price and my standard price moving from left to right. Now, I've got price listed first because this is the price variance. What do I have to do at the bottom of that first diamond? I'm going to put in the actual quantity. So the actual number of hours that my employees worked. Move over to the efficiency variance. I'm going to use my knowledge of left to right again, A to Z. A comes first. So this is going to be the actual quantity that my employees worked in the diamond left hand side. In the diamond right hand side is the standard quantity. Now notice this. My actual quantity from the price variance is going to be carried up to the actual quantity in the efficiency variance. My standard price from my efficiency variance is going to be taken down from the standard price in the price variance. Very easy to remember. So now I can fill in the blanks using the information from the question. What is my actual price, the actual rate that I pay my employees? Direct labor cost per hour. $14 is the standard, $13 is the actual. So in my actual price, I'm going to put in $13 per hour. 
in my standard, I'm going to put in the $14 per hour. I'm going to carry that standard price down to the bottom of the diamond for the efficiency variance. So that is $14 per hour. What's my actual quantity of hours worked? Sometimes that's provided in the question. In this case, not. So how do I calculate the actual quantity? This was the actual quantity for the direct materials, but I want the actual quantity for the direct labor. So this is going to be equal to my actual output, the number of units I actually produced, multiplied by the actual quantity in hours per unit. So that is equal to the actual output, which is 6,000 units, multiplied by what is the actual quantity? Direct labor cost, no, nope. hours per unit, actual quantity was 2.5 hours. Multiply that out. That's 15,000. Hours. So notice that just by chance, the kilogram for the direct material was 2.5 and the hours for the direct labor was 2.5. So they ended up with 15,000 hours and 15,000 kilograms. It's just fluke that these are identical. They are never identical in any other instance. All right, let's fill this in. Actual quantity for my price variance is 15,000 hours and I can use it as my actual quantity for the efficiency variance, 15,000 hours. What's the only thing I have left to fill in? The standard quantity. The standard quantity is always equal to the actual output, how many units we actually produced, multiplied by the standard quantity of hours per unit. And remember, students screw this up because they don't use the actual output. Instead, they use the units that are standard, the 5,000. No, never use that. We never use that. We literally never use this. So use the actual 6,000. So this is equal to, I'm going to fill it out down here, 6,000 units multiplied by the standard quantity per unit. Standard quantity per unit is 2. 2 hours per unit is standard. So 6,000 times 2 is 12,000 hours. So now, just like previously, we're going to multiply the actual price times the actual quantity for the price variance. Then we're going to multiply the standard price times the actual quantity. So we're just going to do the multiplication. For the efficiency variance, do the same thing. Multiply the actual quantity by the standard price and then multiply the standard quantity by the standard price. Let's do that. $13 per hour multiplied by 15,000 hours is equal to $195,000. That's what we actually spent. What should we have spent? We should have spent $14 per hour multiplied by 15,000 hours. That is 210,000. Going over to the efficiency variance. What is the actual cost of the quantity that we used? 15,000 hours multiplied by $14. That's 210,000, exactly the same. And then what's the standard amount of hours that we should have used or the cost? What's the cost of the standard amount of hours that we should have used? That is 12,000 hours multiplied by $14 per hour. That is equal to 168,000. So looking at the spending variance, which is also called the rate variance, I'm going to take the difference here. 195,000 minus 210,000. 
I don't care that my number ended up being negative. That's because I took 195,000 and subtracted a larger number. Don't care. I'm going to ignore the negative altogether, 15,000. My question is, is this a good thing or a bad thing for the company? How do I figure that out? I figure that out by looking at the information within the diamond. I spent $13 per hour, but my standard was $14 per hour. Is this good for the company? Favorable or bad for the company? Unfavorable. Well, it's good for the company because I spent less per hour. So this is favorable. So the spending variance, also called the price variance or the rate variance, makes absolutely no difference what you call it. It's still going to be calculated the exact same way. It's still going to mean the same thing. We spent less money than we thought we would have. Our standard said $14, our actual said $13, pat ourselves on the back, we saved money for the company. Now, we're going to go over here and we're going to calculate the efficiency variance, which we could have called the usage variance, but we didn't. So we're going to take 210,000 and subtract 168,000. dollars $42,000. Is this good or bad for us? To determine if it's good or bad, we go to the diamond, the center of the diamond. We should have taken 12,000 hours to finish our job, but we took 15,000 hours. Was that good for the company or bad? And the answer is it was bad because we took longer than we should have. So this is unfavorable variance. So we've got a favorable variance for the spending variance of $15,000. We have an unfavorable variance for the efficiency variance of $42,000. Now, how do we calculate the total labor variance, which is also moving my sheet up? which is also called the flexible budget variance. We can calculate this in two ways. We can take the total all the way on the left hand side, the $195,000. And we can subtract the number all the way on the right hand side, $168,000. That will tell us what the total variance is, the difference between what we did spend and what we should have spent if we did everything according to the standards. Or we can take the two variances, the $15,000 favorable, subtract the $42,000 unfavorable. Why are we subtracting them? Because they're moving in opposite directions. If they were both favorable, we would add them. If they were both unfavorable, we would add them. But since they are opposite, we are going to subtract them. If the number that you come out with is a negative number, it means nothing, just remove the negative. It's just because I'm subtracting 42 from 15. Makes absolutely no difference. Just make sure you input it as a positive number. So the difference here is, and it doesn't matter which way I calculate it, the difference is 27,000. Is that favorable or unfavorable? Well, I can look at these two numbers. This is what I did spend. This is what I should have spent. It's bad for the company. Or I can look at the variances and say the unfavorable variance is larger. So this is going to be unfavorable, bad for the company. Now, let me just expand the view so you can see the whole page. This is how we calculate the direct labor variances using the diamond approach. Do you have to use this approach? Absolutely not. You want to use the formulas? Go for it. You want to use the column approach? Feel free. Any method that you use should end up in the exact same place. If it doesn't, you know you're doing something wrong. This was the direct labor variances.